What's going on guys? We are back today with another video for you and I'm going to touch on some similar cards that I've been messing around with just because I'm <clears throat> kind of hooked on them at the moment. So you guys can, you'll see what I mean here in a second. We're, uh, this is going to be the deck for today. I'm going to touch on Haru Specs again. I've just been on this kick with this deck, with this card. I don't know why, but uh, we're going to do it in a diff little bit different variant than last time. I'm going to tag in Auto Tune, so we're going to combo are you specs and our auto tune which a lot of you're gonna be like well how do you do that because you know auto tune wants exactly three copies and this wants five life on land which is fine i'm basically going to sacrifice these five life on land cards to buff the remaining uh three pairs everywhere and we're able to slot in a one of art and culture for heimdall which is nice so since this also gets you that uh six album types here so Nice little spread here. I, I kind of dig. I kind of dig this deck. It looks really neat. It's got some trains in it, making it look really cool. It's got the uh, cosmic engine combo PSR. So a lot going on in this deck. So we're gonna talk through it real quick. So as mentioned, auto tune when drawn. If you're tied in the round, gain plus twenty this turn. When played, if your deck has exactly three cards from any album, those cards wherever they are gain plus fourteen until played. So basically. Our science, our history, our space, and our ocean cards are all going to get that plus 14 until played. <clears throat> Next up, how are you specs? Like I mentioned, when played, if your deck has five or more life on land cards and five or fewer Roman Empire cards, which it counts itself, uh, your life on land cards, wherever they are, lose 15 perm, and all other cards gain plus 10 perm. So essentially sacrificing five cards to make all the rest of your deck better. So, neat idea, especially if you rock cards like Pando that want to be kind of sacrificed anyway. It's kind of a neat combo. I, I really am digging it. I just, I don't know why. I just, like I said, I'm kind of on this kick now. So, just mentioned Pando. You can see when returned, this card's going to lose 85 permanent, which is all of its base power. And it's going to distribute it amongst your whole deck. So, uh, all the rest of your cards in your deck gain plus 5 perm. So, that's kind of a neat little combo there with those two cards I really like. We did say Heimdall works in this deck. When returned, if at least six cards in your deck are from different albums, your cards, wherever they are, gain plus 30 this round. So another another good, strong card there. Uh, let's finish up Science. We've got uh, Flying Scotsman. When played for every round completed, gain 30 this turn. When returned, this cost plus one perm. And rocking uh, Sir Nigel Gressley Locomotive here. When played for every on-track card you've played this game, up to a max of five, we're going to gain more permanent power. So again, kind of go on the permanent power theme a little bit here. We've got obviously Flying Scotsman gives it, uh, well, gives re uh, energy, or not energy regen, I'm sorry, power regen. And then we've got Lich, Siamese also tagging in here, you can see. Uh, when drawn, if you're trailing by 50, get plus 10 perm. When played, if you lost one round, plus 10 perm. And then if you lost the turn, gain plus 10 perm. So Again, we don't care if it's getting sacrificed as long as we're still getting permanent power out of it. Seems good. Siamese doing the same thing when drawn, getting power for the round. And then when returned, going to get six perm, So, which is kind of nice. Yellow Jacket's going to sit in our hand and debuff our opponent all game. So we don't care that it's kind of getting sacrificed on its power. Can also play it too. I mean, digging your opponent, you know, 24 on the turn for three cards is still pretty relevant. <clears throat> and then... Ax, Axel, I don't even know how to say this card, but basically he's a cantrip card, you can see. He costs three, but he's going to give you four back. So we actually net one energy on this card. That's why he's in the deck, uh, primarily just because we do have some expensive cards this, in this deck. And uh, just being able to, to net energy, I think, is kind of a, kind of good in this deck. Same with Eldorado, kind of nets energy, right? Costs seven, actually gets you 12, so uh, pretty good there. Amber Room only cost four energy. I wanted some cheap cards in this deck because this is a kind of a middle range week. I'll show you the the league here, what we're playing in here in a second. When re when return, this card gains plus ninety and costs minus two perm, so it gets a little cheaper too as the game goes on. Uh, Green Witch, another energy saver, only three energy here for some big stats. Uh, PSR, cool card. Uh, when played, if your deck has exactly three space cards. Three of your random non-space cards gain plus 23 perm. 
Cosmic Engine we mentioned before when played. Three of your random history cards and three of your random oceans and seas cards, wherever they are, gain 13 perm. So, again, you can see a lot of these permanent buffs were stacking up, right? We got PSR permanent buff, Cosmic Engine permanent buff, uh, Haru Specs, Pando. So, tons of permanent effects going on here. We've got Cano Crystales. When drawn a random card from each album in your hand, gains plus 18 until played. Atlantis, just a heavy hitter, uh, and it makes itself cheaper, which is nice, and bigger as the game goes on. So it's going to end up being a three drop for, what's that, 140 power. It's pretty strong. And Sea Sheep, when played, your opponent's cards in hand with 41 or more base power lose 30 this turn. So... Overall, deck seems really good. I really, I really dig it. Like I said, I really dig this this archetype. <clears throat> Let me. I, I did say I wanted to go and show you what the league we're in. This is Angels and Demons Week. Uh, Philosophy's getting the eighty buff. Innovations of War sixty. Vicious Vikings fifty. And there's the other three down there at forty. And we've got starting energy at twenty. Min 10, max 28. We're only going to get 13 per turn. So that's the one I like to keep my eye on is the energy per turn. Is that starting energy is going to run up, dry out quick. So uh, energy per turn, though, at 13. So not that big of a week, right? Kind of a smaller week on energy. <clears throat> but let's jump in, see what we can get. <sighs> Try this bad boy out. As always, good time to say, if you guys do enjoy the content, please hit that like button and that subscribe button. It's been kind of slow lately. I feel like we've kind of died off on on subscribers and new new viewers especially is really taking a dip. I don't know if it's just I've tapped into everybody that's going to view this channel or what, but I mean, I'm seeing some pretty low numbers, so definitely want to get out there and try to get you guys subscribing, liking, commenting, trying to get me... Uh, kind of back in the public eye a little bit better maybe i'm just maybe youtube's not picking up my videos anymore or something i don't know <clears throat> but all right here we go uh let's see what we started with we got auto tune right out the rip are you specs right on the rip too i kind of like that locked out my pando that's unfortunate let's play axel here gonna get that cantrip on my energy <clears throat> Opponent's starting out strong with the Heimdall on the start. That's always really good. And we're minus 50 right here, too. That's not the greatest for us. I think I'm going to play Heimdall now, even though I you want to play him turn one, obviously. But I'm going to slot him here so I at least know I get him back next time on turn uh, round three, turn one. <clears throat> and let's go Atlantis and PSR. He's probably got us this first round by the looks of it. But again, this deck kind of kind of starts off slow and gets going later as you get all these permanent effects. So not surprising that we're losing uh, the first round. Looks like we're up against somewhat of a lock deck here. Doing dirty things to us. Dirty, dirty things. Do it like that. We should keep our cards cycling. I uh, did mention the other day to you guys, if you saw one of my other videos, kind of about, I was talking about my son and how he took him to the neurological specialist. And I was kind of getting into it, like really kind of delving down the rabbit hole with you guys on what he was talking about with the primitive reflexes and everything. It was pretty cool. <clears throat> uh, I really enjoyed kind of learning a lot about that stuff. Um, but why, why, why I bring it up again, I was uh, actually... Oh, I don't like that. I can't cycle over here properly. Uh, let's see. I'm at 14. Uh, definitely need Eldorado here. We'll go Pando. But uh, why I bring it up, uh, that's funny because I love, uh, I, I live so close to my job. Like, I'm literally, like, my house is two minutes away from work. It's so nice. So I go home for lunch most days uh, just to kind of relax, get away for an hour. It's real nice, like, to kind of you know, relieve some stress away from work and stuff when you get away for just an hour or sometimes just feels like makes the day go so much quicker for those of you that, you know, deal with that as well. You kind of understand what I'm saying, I'm sure. But, um, 
so at lunch, I, I typically, you know, I watch TV shows or whatever while I'm eating. And uh, one that I've been binge watching because I love it. Always been a big a- ancient aliens enthusiast. So I definitely believe in ancient alien theory and a lot of the stuff that they talk about on this show specifically, I, I kind of agree with. But uh, I was so I was watching that and uh, one of the episodes was talking about sounds different like sounds that do different things as far as uh like you can levitate objects with sounds and stuff and they've proven this like like, like you can levitate like ping pong balls and stuff with sounds but basically if you could amplify it you know could you move really heavy objects and stuff with it uh, it's, it's kind of neat to think about i don't know if we have that obviously we don't have that technology right now but could we at some time you know i don't know i think that'd be pretty cool though uh let's see here Not looking the greatest here, but uh, <clears throat> but one of the things they showed with the sound, which I thought was neat, was mandalas, and it's crazy because throughout like ancient culture, there are mandalas in like several different cultures, like India and stuff, on everything. In a mandala, all it is is it's a it's what the sound, like whatever the the that. I don't know what you call it, gigahertz or hertz of the sound is. It does different shapes. So you can actually have, a, if you have a soundboard, pour like salt or sand on it. And then as you change the the volume or the noise or, or, the, or the hertz on it, it actually changes an image on the soundboard. And it, that's, that's what the mandalas are. It's really neat. I was like, this is cool. It's cool as heck. So, uh. I don't know if you guys never seen that. Definitely check it out. It's just kind of mind-boggling that that's uh, what they are. But they have these ancient cultures had like these mandalas that were supposed to be like sacred and sacred sounds of the gods, and they think that potentially the whole universe was just created by sound or or music of sorts. So uh, that's one theory that they kind of spit out, which I thought was kind of neat to think about. Imagine if the whole universe was literally just created because of sound <laughs> but uh one of the one of the sounds that they talk about especially for shamans and people that want to enter like trances or, or people like uh like i said ancient shamans or something that they say they can communicate with the gods and they, they talk to the gods they enter like a uh like a trance but in doing so a lot of these cultures throughout history have used like drums and music to enter these transes, which I thought was cool. So they showed like some people like bouncing around, dancing and like smacking drums and such. Um, and they found that uh, five hertz on drums is like where your brain starts to almost replicate, like the waves replicate the drums. And that's kind of when you enter into the trans mode, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, so it's funny, I actually had went back to work and uh, I was like looking up, trying to find like on Spotify, like, is there five hertz drums or five hertz, I don't know, something music. And man, a lot of stuff popped up. I was really surprised. There's like tons of, tons of stuff on Spotify just to like enter relaxation mode or transes. And so I was like, oh my gosh. So I was sitting there like playing it in my office, <laughs> like going into deep meditation <laughs> it was pretty funny but yeah definitely relaxing i could see how it could definitely kind of put you into an altered state of mind or different consciousness the government actually in the 70s under jimmy carter i believe was in the 70s um they were using what's called remote viewing and in doing so they actually were putting these people in trans like states using five hertz um drums and different techniques i think there was beads they said they were using as well um so these noises essentially helped them go into these altered states of mind and they were able to these these remote viewers if you guys don't know what that is basically they can view things that aren't currently in the room like i think one of the things was like tracking down like a russian missile or something that they were trying to find at the time i can't can't remember what it was off the top of my head but it was something with the russians uh, back in like the cold war or some crap 
but they were using these remote viewers to like effectively track down things. It was crazy, almost like some back alley secret spy stuff, you know. I uh, thought that was kind of cool, though. Ooh, I think we kicked this dude's butt. What the heck's going on here? I'm not even paying attention when I'm winning. <laughs> so, you can see this deck, this deck slaps. I don't know what it is. How are you, Specs, man? Card is a sleeper. I guess I might have to do a video of, like, underrated cards. I think that'd be a good one to do for you guys. Some cards like this card specifically that are just, in my opinion, completely flying under the radar. So this, this card seems legit. I mean, I'm just, I've been stomping with it nonstop. <clears throat> Let's do one more. We'll do one more. But yeah, definitely shoot me some comments on what you guys think. Do you believe in... Uh, aliens or do you believe that we've been visited in the past by ancient aliens you know i love to love to hear people's opinions on things and you know i like to uh i like to ask questions that's kind of my thing is that and i like fact i don't know that um, obviously i don't know what's fact and what's not with this but i do like when they can show physical tangible items and say well this is an unexplained thing we don't know what it is but Here's what we do know, and you're like, hmm, kind of makes sense, you know, if you connect the dots that, you know, this, this, and this. So, I don't know. I like to let people make their own, you know, decisions or, or what do you call it, um, beliefs. You know, I, I, I respect all beliefs out there, you know. There's, there's a reason you believe what you believe, but, you know, I like to, I don't like to rely solely on faith in things because it's not tangible i do prefer to have science or fact behind things just i, don't know, I just i think i just have a very uh, analytical mind in that respect it's probably why i'm an engineer but um <clears throat> yeah so definitely leave some comments i'm curious what you guys think uh, I was actually talking with my buddy, I think it was Saturday, I went over to his house, I was helping him out with uh, uh, basically loading up some soil into a planter box, he, we we built a little backyard planter for him, and I, I've been uh, using my truck to just, you know, kind of haul soil back there for him, dumping it in his, back, in his backyard, <clears throat> but um, yeah, it kind of came up while we were digging, you know, and just chatting along i was kind of asked him you know hey what you know what brought you or because back in the day he wasn't very religious um i think he started out kind of uh you know he was kind of you know kind of a party guy you know we'd go drinking and stuff or you know he didn't he didn't go to church or anything that at least that i know of didn't seem very like a you know religious type but, uh, you know, as he got a little older, he seemed like he turned his life around a little bit and started going to church and, you know, met a, met a good met a good lady, you know, and uh, things just kind of turned around for him. So I kind of asked him, you know, what, what changed, you know, what made you, you know, switch gears, I guess, in a sense. And it was interesting. And what he told me was uh, we both had this buddy that um, we were real good friends with. And he ended up getting into a motorcycle accident, and he passed away. Well, um, I guess he had gotten invited to, like, a church ceremony or a church event after his death. I don't know if it was, like, a celebration thing of his life or something like that, but basically had gotten invited, and... <clears throat> They were, like, talking about him, I guess, and it just kind of hit him, like, you know, look at all these people that missed him and loved him and cared about him, and it was all these people in church, and, you know, he just, something he said was, like, it kind of hit him, you know, like, this is kind of what he wanted to be like, he wanted to believe in, and so he, uh, he started going, obviously, and kind of got into the church scene pretty hot and heavy, which, you know, I respect it, it's cool, but... It's always interesting to hear people um, people's stories and why they believe what they believe and how they got to that point, how they realized, or I don't know, I'm trying to 
talk and play here at the same time. But but I, I told him because uh, after after our buddy died, I was like, well, um, what if his whole reason for being here was to to change you? You know, there's it's uh, there's people I've been watching these NDE videos pretty hot and heavy lately, which is kind of interesting if you guys haven't seen those before definitely recommend them there's tons of like near-death experience videos out there that people share and tell you what they see when they die and come back and stuff and they're just really interesting to me but he uh oh, i totally just brain farted there <laughs> i hate when that happens oh so basically i was talking about uh, our buddy that died right and uh <clears throat> Uh, in these videos, though, they, a lot of them talk about that you get to choose your path. So before, I don't know, before you're born or whatever, you basically say, this is how my life's going to go. Uh, I need to, I'm coming to earth to learn this or do that, essentially. It's kind of the idea, which a lot, a lot of people talk about that when they, when they pass over, they get the choice to come back or not, which is interesting to me. <laughs> But uh, basically, you could choose a path, and your path could be really just to help one person. And it could maybe they're struggling with something to to perfect their soul, and your whole mission in being here is to help them or guide them in some way that you know changes them or, or something like that. Which is kind of a neat idea, but that's kind of the idea that I told him after we had talked was, hey, what if what if Tom's whole reason for being here was to affect you specifically, you know, who knows him dying. It wasn't a complete waste, right? Cause it completely changed my buddy's outlook on life and made him a completely different person. So I, I think it's interesting when you think of things that way, <laughs> who knows, maybe one day we'll all know. Sorry to get a little fly, philosophical on y'all, but, you know, sometimes it's fun. Doing a little something different here. I think I want to play Pando, even though it's zero. I want to buff the rest of my deck a little bit more here. Neat deck we're playing against. I haven't played against a going underground deck, I think, yet. It's the first time. It's just crazy. It's crazy to me that like, I never see this. Decisions, decisions. All right, we're starting to put some power down now. You can see this deck starting to run away with it a little bit as the permanent power is kind of ramping up. It's pretty nice. by 150 we'll do it like this I think that's going to be enough he needs 500 here ooh might have got it I was hoping to debuff more than one <clears throat> and we got it but man scared me there alright down to the last round Let's see if we can do it can we do it? All right, we're coming out with Heimdall. We're coming out swinging. Fists up. Rare to go. Blah! Slap your little hog badger. That's what I'm talking about. Let me see that hog badger. Wow!
Oh yeah, I think this is this is GG here. Yeah, you just can't compete with the the perm power. I'm starting to starting to stack up. He was doing good early game, but you can see we when we turned the tide and started running away with it now. Look at that amber room. Ooh. Ooh. Zero costed, three hundred power card. Mm. Insane. Insane in the membrane. All right, so this one's going to hit for, what's that, 80-ish, but yet so do you. Let's do it like that. Not too shabby. I'll take it. All right, guys, that's the deck. Let me know in the comments what you thought. As always, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, have a good night.